Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Learn Wine, Love Wine. Today we are looking at the differences between Malbec and Cot. As with everything, it's the same grape. Um, today what I'll do is I'll start with a little bit of the history and um, where they came from. So Cot is what they think is probably the original name, which comes from Caos in the southwest of France. Um, it's one of these funny wines where there's about 30 different synonyms. Um, in fact, uh, Oxua, as well as probably another slightly more famous name for this grape, but we'll put that one on a different shelf for now. Sticking with Cot. Um, so this started in Cours, even though there was lots of Malbec all over um, France. And in the 1800s, 1850s, um, this got shipped as with all the varieties that started in France, they traveled around the world. And this ended up in Argentina. And Argentina now is the home of Malbec. And this is what we call it generally around the world Malbec. Um, the difference between the two, it caught the, the Malbec version in Cahors, southwest of France. It's, it has a much cooler climate compared to Argentina where it's much warmer. With a cooler climate, you find a much uh, more savoury, even more rustic um, flavours of damson, raisins, even tobacco. The tannins are much, much stronger. It's um, a more structured wine. And so actually, as a positive, it can age for much longer. But if you like to have a softer, juicier wine, then Malbec over in Argentina is the wine for you. Um, having that extra sunshine and getting more sugar in the grape, the wine is a lot more plush. In fact, the tannin levels go down, it's softer, it's juicier, it's much more fruity. So they are the differences between the two. Um, Mendoza is the homeland of Malbec in Argentina. So have a look for that on labels. You'll find that on this label here on this wine. So today I am trying a Tinto Historico, well, not quite a Malbec, I cheat, sorry. It's, it was my rules, um, so rules are meant to be broken. This is actually a field blend between Malbec and Petit Verdot. Um, as a little bit of an extra bit of information, in Bordeaux, the famous region um, in France, where they do a lot of blends of grapes, both Malbec and Petit Verdot are one of the five grape varieties that you uh, will find in Bordeaux. Um, in Argentina, hence the name Tinto Historico, um, actually in the 20th century, it was really, really normal um, to have blended wine there in Argentina, and especially these field brands of Malbec and Petit Verdot. Um, I picked this, I would have obviously liked to get 100% Malbec, but this is made by Bodega Catina Zapata. They are one of my favorite uh, wineries in Argentina. Reason for that, um, Nicolas Catina is the famous man from this winery. Um, this is a family owned winery since 1902. But in 1994, he is famously known in the wine industry for looking at high altitude Malbec. Now, one of the slight negatives of Malbec is there isn't too much acidity. Um, some people want to try and stay away from it, acidity. Don't. Acidity is about refreshing your palate and making it much, rather than it being a flabby wine. And that is something that cheap Malbecs and Malbecs planted where it's too hot, that can be the problem. So he was famous in 1994 for uh, going to some of the regions in Mendoza, Lujan de Cuyo or um, Uco Valley, if we're going to get specific. So have a look and see if they're on any labels. They're in the foothills of the Andes Mountains um, at around 800 metres to 1,500 metres. Uh, he started planting up there and with the cooler climate, um, much higher in the Andes Mountains, the Malbec has done so much better. And probably for that exact region, that is why Malbec is so well known, certainly in the UK, but around the world for his discovery for his work and he also did a lot of clonal development so looking at where Malbec worked best 
and why. And that's something that's been copied around with many of the wineries in uh, Mendoza and Argentina in general. So this family has now done a little label. This is a label for the supermarket. So why not try um, something from a winery that has such history and is so historic for Malbec? So um, let's give it a little pour. This I got from Tesco's at 10 pounds. So again, really, really good value. Um, I don't know exactly the percentage of Malbec to Petit Verdot because it's a field blend. So whenever you either see that on a label or someone says that, it's often that the, they know, they can look at the plants and they can see that there's a mixture of Malbec and Petit Verdot, but they don't know the exact percentage. So we're gonna have uh, an interesting little taste. Now, Ma Malbec, cot, however you want to call it, is still known for having, you know, black, black fruits. And this is definitely more of a black cherry um, kind of smell. But actually, what's coming through, it's, it, it's very fruity. Um, is a lot of kind of, um, even a bit of a tartiness, like um, red currants, some sour red fruits, and even some like red, like some raspberries. There's a little bit of a spiciness. They've definitely used some oak on this, which I like. Um, it's really sweet vanilla and a lovely kind of mi milk chocolate. So if you like the sound of that sweeter fruit, juicy, this is gonna be a good one for you. Also, it's quite floral. Um, that's probably like a violent, a uh, violent, it's not a violent wine, uh, thank goodness. Um, violet, the, the floral notes, violet are very famous for the great variety Petit Verdot that we talked about. Um, Petit Verdot, as just a, a little side note, because the camera's on me and I can't stop talking, um, is generally a blending wine. They are now making some really fantastic single varieties, so 100% Petit Verdot, but generally, especially in Bordeaux, as I said, they use five varieties. It's used 2%, 3% for its color. It adds darkness and a little bit of like exotic spice and uh, violet fruit. So that's probably adding a little bit of floral um, qualities to this wine. Actually, this is quite a little, a little bit surprising. It's lovely. It's actually more savoury on the palate. I mean, almost even a little bit herbal, actually. But that's nice because you've got all the lovely, the lovely smell, the chocolatiness, um, the sweetness of fruit on the nose. But actually, when you're tasting it, clean, dry, a little bit savoury. The tannins are like a lovely kind of powdery uh, tannins. They're soft. They're there, but very much in the background. It's very, very easy drinking. Um, I would definitely drink a bottle, no issues. Um, so have a little try of this. Malbec, especially from Argentina, is a much more approachable style of wine. I personally like it um, when they do blends. I think it becomes a lot more complex, but go around and try different Malbecs. Um, now in terms of pairing, you, you almost have, you've got three styles to think about. If you're going for a cheaper Malbec that doesn't really see much oak, um, and it's much more just fruity, uh, pair it with, in fact, pair it with something with like a plum compote. Um, Malbec is always very plummy, um, so that will pair nicely. Or even meatballs, um, I mentioned on my episode before, spaghetti bolognese, this would, would work nicely. Or some fajitas, something like that. Beef fajitas, delicious. If you're going for a much more expensive Malbec, you know it's gonna have had a lot more oak, it's a bigger, more intense wine then go with the intense beefy, meaty flavors, venison and steak. And then I think if you're going for a cot, uh, the Malbec cot um, from Cahors, think about it being much more savory and rustic. So for that reason, I would put it with maybe casseroles, like a spicy sausage with garlic or pork and beans, um, duck confit, that kind of thing. So again, as I always say, like for like, whatever the wine tastes like, try and match it um go out and get yourself a bottle of this um there's so much i could say about it have a look at bodega catina zapata in general um but this is a really really nice uh introductory step into the world of malbec with a little bit of petit verdot 
enjoy guys and hope you learned a little something like subscribe share all that usual stuff that i'm supposed to say because everyone says it and uh see you again next week cheers